Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today we are doing a new moon yoga class. So these classes are really special. I like to do them on my own when I'm at home, but I figured I would share it with you guys in case it was something else that you wanted to do. So this is kind of a mix between vinyasa flow and yin yoga. So we will be flowing uh, through our transitions and through our poses, but we're not really focusing on strength too much. And we are going to be holding a lot of hip openers, similar to what we would do in a yin yoga style practice. I have one block close by just in case, but really I'm not planning to do anything with my props. So if you don't have any, that should be perfectly fine. So if you're not used to practicing or merging your yoga practice with the new moon or the full moon, um, the new moon is usually a time for introspection. You might be a little bit lower on energy and it's also a wonderful time to plant the seeds and visualize what you want to happen. So it's a great time to really focus in on what you truly want, what your intentions are going to be for the next two weeks until we reach to the full moon, which is the completion of the cycle. So. This is definitely a more introspective type of practice and we will begin with a short meditation before moving through our flows. So sit in a way that is comfortable to you. For me, that's cross-legged. For you, it might be kneeling or even sitting up on a block. And we're gonna turn our palms to face up towards the sky. So this has a bit more of a receptive quality to it. And just let the palms, back of the hands, rest on the tops of the knees. Sit up nice and tall and draw the shoulders down and away from the ears. The chin can tuck slightly in towards the chest Close the eyes. So if you're new to meditation, this can be a little overwhelming. Just don't worry about whether you're doing it perfectly or not. Thoughts will come and go and that's okay. Simply feel the breath as it flows in and out through the nose. Feel the hips and the sit bones grounded in the earth as you lift up through the spine all the way up to the crown of the head. Relaxing even the facial muscles. this is a new moon meditation start to focus and visualize the things that you would like to bring into your life so the initiatives you want to take the changes you want to make the relationships you want to build to really tune in taking some time for yourself to reconnect to what you truly and really want giving yourself permission to dream big. So notice if you start to become critical of the things that you want, or if you start to judge those desires, just step out and step away from that. focus on something very concrete, very tangible, a project that you want to start or a thing that you want to do, or it might be a little bit more vague, more like a feeling that you want to start cultivating. This is 
both are fine. Just try to submerge yourself in it throughout this practice. Taking a few more minutes in our meditation and silence. into the chest, bowing in and really committing to whatever it is that you want to focus on on this practice. So whatever it is that you want to start. Taking a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Inhale and exhale. Blinking the eyes open, we'll start to move a little bit more. Fingertips come down to the floor. As you inhale, reach the arms up overhead, bring the palms together to touch, and then exhale, soften, release the arms back down. Two more times like this, inhale. Tracing a big circle with the fingertips. Exhale, press the shoulders down and release. Last one, inhale, reach it up. And let's move to a side bend. Left hand comes down to the ground, right arm extends up and over, just like a crescent moon. Making this half circle shape, pull your right shoulder back so the chest stays open. Soften the neck, let your head be heavy. Both sit bones grounded on the floor. We'll take a neck release here, so keep your head exactly as it is. Just release your right arm to hover a few inches off the floor. So you should feel a nice deep stretch into the right side of your neck. Just breathe into it. up to center and move to the other side. Inhale, arms reach up into your side bend, right hand down, left arm reaches up and over. Not putting too much pressure on your supporting hand. Pull your left shoulder back, let your head be heavy. Reach through the fingertips. Breathe into the side waist. Let's release the top hand so it can hover off the ground, stretch a little bit deeper into the neck. Rolling all the way back up to center. Let's make our way onto hands and knees. Palms are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips. We're gonna move in and out of cat and cow and child's pose. We wanna make this a really flowy and circular type of practice. So as you inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, curl tailbone up, 
And on the exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, and start to press your hips back towards your heels into your child's pose. As you inhale, lift up into cow, drop the belly, lift the gaze. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, and press it back into child's pose. A few more times, go at your own pace. Inhaling. Two more like this. Inhale, drop the belly and look up. Exhale, contract, push it back, child's pose. Last one. And from this child's pose, let's come back onto all fours into your tabletop stance. Walk your palms a couple inches past the shoulders, tuck the toes under, and we'll take our first downward facing dog. So go ahead and paddle the feet, shake out the hips, do any little movements that you need to do to get comfortable here. Arms are nice and long, fingertips are spreading wide. And we'll walk our palms towards the back of the mat, coming into your ragdoll fold. Keep your feet about hip width distance apart, bend the knees so that the upper body can dangle and hang heavy. We wanna make all of these movements in our poses and transitions purposeful. Almost as if you can feel whatever you visualize start to manifest and become true for you. Really moving with intention in a way that supports your body. Bending the knees a little bit more. Let's roll all the way up to stand. Take your time as you get there. Rolling the shoulders up inch by inch. And draw the shoulders back down. Or just stay as you are at the back of the mat. I'm just gonna turn to face towards you so you can see a little better. You wanna keep your feet hip width distance apart. We're gonna reach the arms up overhead, bending into the elbows and holding on to the opposite elbows. So staying up really nice and tall, take an inhale here. And as you exhale, lean over towards the right and press into your left hip. So you're forming that crescent shape. Inhale, come all the way back up and then exhale over to the other side. Inhale, lift it up. And as you exhale, move over so press into your left hip and then bend the knees a little bit as you start to roll and fold all the way down. And we're gonna lift all the way back up. So right elbow leads the way, press into the legs and come all the way up. Let's circle to the other side. Lean onto your left elbow, bend the knees and swing it down. So just picking up the pace a little bit. You don't have to be going exactly at the same speed as I am. Just flow with the breath. Feel the side body open up. Taking one more in each direction. So you inhale when you're up, exhale to lower. Inhale, rise up. This is our last one. Exhale, lean it down. Come all the way back up. Re-extend the fingertips up towards the sky. And let's melt it down, bend the knees, soften. So I'll turn back to how I was before and let's make our way into our downward facing dog. So just walk the palms out in front of you. In your downward dog, let's extend our right leg up towards the sky, bend the right knee, open up your hip. Keep pressing your right shoulder down. And let's step our right foot through in between our palms to the top of the mat, coming into a low lunge. So keep your fingertips down to the floor and lower your left knee to the ground. You wanna feel your chin and chest lift up as you press your hips forward. So just like a tide on the ocean, we're gonna move in and out of two poses. So as you inhale, lift and lengthen. And on the exhale, you're gonna straighten your right leg and fold forward. Inhale into your low lunge. And exhale, fold. Three more like this, inhale. And exhale. 
Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift, and you're gonna hold it here. Keep your left hand planted to the ground. Reach your right arm back and catch a hold of your left foot. So instead of trying to pull our left heel in towards the glute, I want you to press and kick your left foot in towards that palm until it pulls your right shoulder back and you can lean back into it. Just a different way of doing this quad stretch. A little bit of a back bend. Take one more deep belly breath and carefully release the hold of your back foot. Palms come to the ground. Step it back, downward dog. And let's switch over to the other side. Reach your left leg up, bend the knee and open up that hip nice and wide. Relax your neck. Let's start to pull our left knee through until we can step it forward into that low lunge. The knee is stacked over the top of the ankle. The fingertips stay down to the floor. As you inhale, get a lift in the chest. And as you exhale, we're gonna fold forward over our left thigh and bow in. Four more times, inhale, lift. And exhale, soften into it. Low lunge. And hamstring stretch. Two more, inhale, lift up and look up. Exhale, release. Next time you lunge, hold it there. Plant the right hand, reach your left arm back and catch a hold of your right foot. Start to press that right foot in towards the palm so that it can pull your left shoulder back and lift your chin and the chest up. Like gravity, pull your hips down a little bit lower. release left hand to the floor step it back into your downward facing dog so from down dog we're gonna move from here into upward dog a few more times so just like a wave rippling in and out as you inhale slowly ripple forward through into your up dog so flipping the toes and lifting the heart exhale use your core to carry you through back into your downward facing dog. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, rock it forward, keep your hips lifted, looking up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last time here, inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward dog. And now let's shift forward into our plank pose to lower all the way down onto our belly. So just make a little pillow for yourself, left form to the ground, and you can rest your forehead over the top of your form. We're gonna bend into our right knee, catch a hold of that foot and pull it in towards the glute for a little quad stretch. Grab a hold of a strap if this is not accessible to you, holding for about 10 or so breaths. Keep your knees hip width distance apart. Connecting back to the intention you would like to set. Honoring how your body feels, taking as many breaks as you need. Let's slowly release the right foot to the floor. Coming into Sphinx pose, forearms on the ground. Lift the chin, lift the chest. Press into the toes, inhale. And exhale, release. Let's move to our quad stretch on the other side. So right forearm down, pull your left heel in towards you.
relaxing whatever doesn't need to work right now. Let's set that left foot back down. Coming back into your Sphinx pose. If Sphinx feels pretty easy and you'd like to go a little bit deeper, you can always come into seal by lifting the elbows off the ground. Keep pressing your shoulders back. No pinching in the low back here. And release. Making your way back into your downward facing dog. Not staying here very long, just walk your feet over towards the top of the mat. And let's bend our knees generously and roll all the way up to stand. Let's step our feet wide. You'll want to have your heels in and your toes out. Hands on the tops of your thighs, I start to bend into the knees and drop the hips nice and low. And just wiggle a little bit side to side, feel the knees open up a little wider and the chest staying lifted. Strong foundation through the feet. Let's interlace our fingers and you're gonna flip the palms to reach the knuckles up and over. Press into the hands, sink down a little bit lower. Squeeze and engage into the glutes, maybe shift the gaze up. And straighten into the legs, release. Let's interlace our fingers behind our low back. Bring your feet parallel to the shorter edges of your mat. Hinge at the waist and fold down, reaching the knuckles up and over. Slow down the breath. And let's release fingertips to the ground. Lift the chin and chest up about halfway. You're gonna turn your heels and toes out again. And we'll move into our Skandasana pose. Bend into your right knee, flex the left foot. And bend the knee so much that your hips can drop down. As you inhale, lift back up. And then exhale, walk over to the left, bend the left knee. Right foot is flexed a few more times. Inhale up. Exhale, going down. Inhale up. Exhale to lower. This last time, maybe reach your arms out. Inhale, lift. Exhale, right knee bends. Last one, inhale up, exhale, lower down. Let's come all the way back to center into our forward fold again, holding on to the big toes with your two piece fingers as you inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, bend the elbows away from each other and fold a little bit deeper. Crown of the head is reaching down towards the floor. Relax the neck, try not to let all of your weight go into the heels. always tuning in, making this a nurturing practice that doesn't feel draining, but can, can instead help recharge us. Release the hold of your toes so fingertips can come back to the ground. Lift your chest up a little, and we're gonna toe heel the feet in a little bit wider than your hips with your heels and toes out so you can lower into your squat. Hands together at the front of the heart. Use your elbows to open the knees up a little wider and lifting up. So shoulders are drawing down and away from the ears. Closing the eyes, finding your breath. Now from here, You'll need to bring your right fingertips as far over towards the top right corner as you can and extend your left arm up. Notice how your left knee wants to buckle in, try to keep it pressing open. This might be enough, or if you'd like, you can take a bind by bending the elbows, holding onto the back of your right thigh and pulling the left shoulder back. And release 
releasing that bind. Let's switch sides. Left fingertips go out to the side, right arm extends up. Pull that shoulder back so the chest is open. And then interlace your fingers behind you. Only if you wanna take your bind, it's optional. Stay in your squat. I'm just going to turn to face over here so you can see me a little bit better. Now from the squat stance, try to bring your heels in closer if you can. If the flexibility is not there, stay in your regular yogi squat. Otherwise, you want to have your heels touching. And we're going to reach our arms behind us to hold on to the heels and start to bow forward. So just getting into a tiny little ball. Maybe the forehead touches the ground. Maybe it doesn't. No big deal. Take one more full breath and unwind. Let's plop our hips down to the floor and straighten your legs out in front of us so you'll need to turn so that you're facing towards the top of the mat again. We're gonna cross our right knee over the top of our left. Bend your right knee so that your heel is in and then you're gonna bend your left knee. So you want both heels to be in close towards your hips, stacking one knee over the other. As you inhale, reach the arms up overhead, bring your palms together to touch, and then exhale, hands at the heart, start to bow forward. Maybe the belly rests over the thighs as you relax all the way down. So we're holding this one for about a full minute. Feel free to grab a block to make the pose more accessible if you'd like. last few deep breaths in this pose, inviting the hips to open up a little bit more. start to walk the palms back in so that you can lift the chest and we'll bring our hands back behind us feet flat to the ground just uncross a little bit let the knees drop from side to side planting the feet to the ground hip width distance apart just press the feet into the earth as you lift the hips take an inhale here and then exhale drop the hips down a few inches two more like this inhale press and lift Exhale, release. Last one, inhale up. And exhale down with your legs in front of you. Let's do cow face pose on the other side. So you're gonna stack your left knee over your right knee this time. Bend the right leg. Get both heels in nice and close towards you. Sitting up tall. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead, palms together. Exhale, draw the hands towards the heart and let's move into our fold. Try not to worry about how deep you go in this fold. The benefit of the pose is the same.
three more deep belly breaths in and out through the nose. Let's walk the hands in, lift the chin and the chest. Palms come back behind you. We're gonna uncross the legs so the feet can be flat to the ground. And just like we did before, let them drop side to side. And with your feet flat down on the ground, we'll do those same little tabletop poses or reverse tabletop poses. As you inhale, lift your hips up, maybe lean the head back. Exhale, lower down to hover with control. Two more. Inhale up and exhale down. Last one. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale to release. Let's cross at the ankles and make our way to our downward facing dog. And we'll take another hip opener from this down dog. Reach your right leg up towards the sky. Bend the right knee. Open up that hip nice and wide. Straighten and square the leg, coming into Pigeon Pose. Bring your right knee behind your right wrist and extend your left leg back behind you. You can prop your hip up with a block if you'd like. Lifting the chest up, inhale, and then slowly pull the heart forward and down on the exhale. Forehead can come down to the ground or onto your forearms. Melting the heart down. So keep your legs as they are. Just start to lift the head and the chest back up. Now this next part is completely optional, but we did stretch our quads when we were lying down on our belly. So if you wanted, you can come into either your mermaid pigeon or your king pigeon pose. Starting with your quad stretch, you're bending into that left knee and you can reach back with your left hand to pull it in. So hold here if you'd like. Otherwise, you can flip your grip, lifting the elbows up, catching a hold of that foot. So you want to keep your hips grounded, lifting the chin and the chest. And releasing with control, no rush. Bringing back downward dog right foot next to the left and we'll move to the other side left leg up bend your left knee open up that hip straighten and square your left leg and make your way through to pigeon left knee behind your left wrist right leg stretches back find a nice lift in the heart and then slowly fold all the way down to the floor Five to ten breaths here on this side.
keep your legs in this pigeon pose. Just start to lift the head and the chest off the ground. So either hold here or you can transition into that quad stretch, reaching for your right heel and pulling it in. And then once you have it, you can flip your grip so that the elbows are pointing up. Coming into your back bend. Take our time to release. And let's come into our final downward facing dog. Doing any little movements that you need to do here. Lifting the hips up and back. Let's bring the knees down to the floor. Swing your legs out in front of you and we'll lower all the way down to our back. Pulling the knees in towards the belly. Keep the knees wide apart, and if you'd like, you can come into your happy baby pose. Stacking the ankles over the knees, feet are flexed. Keep your tailbone and low back pressing onto the ground. Try to draw the knees down. a little bit side to side and really connect back to your intention whatever it is that you want to manifest or bring into your life let's release we'll come into Shavasana our final resting pose stretching the arms and the legs take up some space Allow yourself to really absorb your practice. So for a lot of people, time in the new moon can be a time of a little bit less energy. So you might benefit from a longer Shavasana than what you normally do. honoring whatever your body needs right now. So this is where I will leave you. Please stay in Shavasana for as long as you would like. And I do recommend that when you are ready to get up, you might want to grab a journal, a pen and a journal, and just write down all the things that you've been focusing on in your practice. It makes the practice a lot more effective and a lot more powerful. Thank you so very much for doing this practice with me. I hope you enjoyed it. It's quite different from the other things that I have on my channel, and I hope that you will subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.